friends, welcome to this week's episode where I show you how I capture my long exposure seascape photography. But first, on the way down to the beach, I found an interesting composition of some trees that I tried to capture. I really hope you enjoy the video. All right, so we made it to the gnarled trees that I've been eyeballing for quite a while. I think I found a composition that I like and the lighting, well, I want the lighting to be overcast right now because I feel like once, when the light hits the trees, it's a little too strong. So I'm hoping that the sun kind of stays out. There's, I see my shadow a little bit in the shot, but I think it should, uh, I think the sun should go away in a minute or two here. There's a lot of clouds on the horizon. We are gonna use the Nikon D850. And I'm gonna use the 16 to 35 lens, and I'm not gonna use a filter because there is nothing moving in this shot. Wow, look at that. That is cool. <laughs> oh, hello. There's a crow. Hello, crow. I'm shooting a classic F16 ISO 100, and it doesn't look like I'm going to have to do any sort of exposure blending here because we're facing away from the sun, but I'm just going to take a few shots just in case. So here's my first test shot at 26 millimeters. That warm sunlight glow was really strong and looked quite beautiful on the trees, although it does complicate the composition a little bit. I decided to stick around and see what would happen with more diffused lighting. Looks like the sun just came out again. Go away, sun. We just need that sun to dip behind that cloud. I think now is the moment that I was looking for. Definitely a lot cleaner with the soft diffused light rather than the sunlight. So here's my next shot, very similar composition to the previous image, but that dappled light ended up fading away and the sun kind of peeked behind a thin cloud, which actually left some of the glow on the trees, but got rid of all the shadows. I think this was definitely interesting lighting to work with. It only happened for about a minute, but it definitely helped to simplify the scene and show a little bit more of the symmetry that I was going for. And then the sun completely dipped behind some thick clouds, and this is what I got. When the shadows went away, I decided to capture this image at 16 millimeters, which is really an odd photograph with uh, this really distorted perspective and all these roots that lead you into the trees. There's definitely elements of all these images that I like. I do love those roots. I love the symmetry with these three trees and that really strong red glow to the branches at the top, I think look really cool as well. As I was shooting these images, I couldn't help but thinking maybe something was missing. And I think after processing these photographs, I think that thing may be atmosphere. The lighting here was really interesting to work with and some of the lighting was really beautiful, but I'd like to try and come back to this composition with a little bit of fog so that I can isolate these three trees from the background. Now, I like how some of these images came out. It was a super fun shoot, although I don't think I will be putting these into my portfolio. I'm definitely interested to see how these are gonna look on the computer. Because sometimes when you're in field, it's just hard to, I don't know, like I, I, I see the whole picture in front of me. I see it with my own eyes. I think the camera is seeing what I'm seeing. But you never really know. Sometimes you get back to the computer and you're like, I don't know what I was thinking. Or something that looked really interesting visually to your eye just doesn't really work compositionally to the camera. It's a really tricky thing, and uh, it doesn't matter how long I photograph, how many years. I've had a lot of photographs where I think they look great to the eye, and then I take the picture, bring it home, and realize it's not so photogenic. <laughs> 
All right. I looked up the sky and realized sunset was going to be pretty good, so I decided to walk down to the beach and capture some seascape photography. So I'm just trying to do some long exposure photography. Make sure the tripod doesn't get knocked over by the waves too. Oh my gosh, this looks crazy though. I'm trying mostly 0.6 of a second and some one second exposures. Um, I don't need to bracket uh, because the sun has already set. So I'm just underexposing the scene a little bit. I'm shooting F-16, a low ISO. The wave motion is so interesting. I think I'm getting a little underexposed with this though, so I'm gonna bump the ISO slightly. My gosh. sky was absolutely spectacular. It was so bright and vivid that I actually had to desaturate the clouds a little bit because they were almost clipping out of the raw file. Now I know what you're thinking, why didn't you turn and shoot the Golden Gate Bridge? Well, I've shot this beach so many times. I've, I've probably shot down on this beach over a hundred times now and uh, I have a lot of shots of the bridge and I think the feeling that I had for this shoot was to just go a little bit more natural and show the wave patterns with the cloud patterns. I wanted to go for more of a minimalist look. This image as well as all the others that I'm going to show you are all single exposures. I just underexposed the scene enough to get those highlight details so that I could bring up the shadows in post. Look at that water flow. Woo. Uh oh. Make sure we don't get knocked over. All right. So I'm shooting everything at 16 millimeters because I, uh, I really want those beautiful water flows going from the edges of the frame into the scene. And right now I'm trying one second exposures. One of the things I love so much about seascape photography is how Every split second can create a completely different wave flow, a completely different foreground and composition. So here's a vertical shot at 16 millimeters, and I love that wave vortex that's created leading you into the horizon and the warmth in the reflection shining through. I just loved the contrasts of colors and shapes here. Now I had my finger on the trigger and I was just taking one shot after another and a split second after I took this image, this is what I captured. And I think it's so interesting seeing these two images because they were captured one after another within a second's time, but they completely change what that foreground looks like. This image is interesting because I actually like the wave pattern a little bit more towards the horizon and I love the warmth shining through these lightning bolt looking reflections. I actually went back and forth between these two photos for quite a while trying to decide which one I enjoyed more. I'd actually like to know your thoughts. Which image do you enjoy more? Which one do you gravitate towards more? Image number one with more of this vortex look that leads you into the horizon, or image number two with these larger reflections and the warmth shining through.
Wow, check that out. Look at those colors. Well, it's getting pretty dark. I'm gonna pack up. Um, I was trying a bunch of different, uh, different exposures for that one. Uh, mostly one second, some half second exposures. I really hope one of those turned out. Oh. What an evening. Well, um, I'm gonna go wash my gear. As always, I really appreciate you sticking around and watching the video. This was uh, unexpected. <laughs> that was very unexpected, but a lot of fun. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing a bunch of these new videos in the future, tutorials, vlogs, time lapses, all sorts of stuff. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it helps me out a lot. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I'm a little speechless.